You're listening to Faces of Our Cities. I'm your host, Jesse. Today, I am with someone who honestly has had an impact on my life for many years, whether he realizes it or not. Uh, He's an author, he's a speaker, he's a coach, he's an entrepreneur. He would blow your mind. Uh, He blew my mind within 10 minutes of getting to meet him. And every time I have a conversation with him, it just changes the trajectory of my day. His name is Gerald Duran. And um, Gerald and I, I don't even know how to really explain our very first encounter, but from what I remember, it was about eight or so years ago, I was working as a freelance video producer and I was just reaching out to anyone that seemed like they could eventually be a client. And I found Gerald on LinkedIn, requested that uh, he become a connection and he agreed. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. I have no idea who this guy is. Can't believe he totally just did that. And I can't remember exactly how it transpired after that. He was, he, it wouldn't be surprising if Gerald was the one to first say, do you want to meet? But it's possible that I did as well. Um, But what was really unique was that A, we got together and we met. um, But our first meeting started with actually Gerald uh, if I remember right, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Gerald, but okay. um, I think we went and got coffee. And then as we were talking, you were like, do you have some extra time? Come with me. And I remember getting in your car and you taking me to a building. Uh, <laughs> this sounds like the beginning of like a terrible, terrible horror movie. But yeah. <laughs> you showed me this building that you were looking at. And I think you were talking with the owner of the building about starting an incubator there for people literally just like me. It was, I, and as you were talking about it, you, your excitement was just so contagious that I was like, oh man, I don't want to <laughs> ever not be connected to this guy. So um, does that sound right to you? I, I think so. You know, if um, I know you're my friend, I sit back and I go, okay, when did we meet? I know we've had a lunch or a dinner at, a, at a, this wonderful Mexican place. But then, you know, as I remember back, it, you know, we were probably, we met for coffee or something and I had an, a meeting or something. And I just said, I didn't want the conversation to end. I said, just come with me. And, you know, we were look, we were scouting Milwaukee for buildings to buy for our, for our incubator. And I can't remember, you know, if it was 2016 or 2017 when we met. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesse, I'm 60 years old. I don't remember things that, that far that, back. Anymore. You know, those little <laughs> details don't matter. No, it's so true. And, but I, it was just something about that that I was like, I don't really meet too many people like this. That, like, first of all, like, I connected with really quickly. And and then they were like, I'm going to show you something I'm working on. And <laughs> most people are like, cool, that was a great coffee. We'll see you later. Talk, talk in, <laughs> you know, a year maybe, right? And um, it's, uh, yeah. And then, honestly, like, what transpired after that was you had started, uh, I, if I remember right, meeting in... Um, the Hudson Lounge, which is right, right, right. kind of a, a co-working space, coffee shop in downtown Milwaukee or Third World, Third, uh, World, yeah. Third Ward, Milwaukee. And I came to a couple of those. Um, you gave me one of your books and I started working through one of your books. I think if I remember right, it was um, His Plan, My Plan. Right. Like that, yeah. uh, was was one of the first ones. Really awesome. Just like Thank you. short vision plan. Like, and like, inter- like I say interactive, right? Because I remember writing in it and it, and I think if I remember right, you had space for me to actually like use it as a workbook. Um, there was plenty of meat in it, but it was also like a book workbook type of experience. Yeah, Jesse, do you know um, how it ended up being a workbook? This is embarrassing, but I'll tell you. So, you know, the first, you know, uh, that was the first book that I wrote and, you know, I'm dealing with a uh, hired like a editor, you know, and all this to help me. I never written one. And so I put all this work to it. The first time I turned it in, they're like, you're like a hundred pages too short. So I was like, Oh my God, how am I going to, you know? So I went back to work, 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 all this stuff. And then I ended up being like 
eight pages too short. So I'm thinking, you know, remember, I make, uh, yeah, I'm an innovator. So I thought, I don't have anything more to say in this book. I'm sick of writing this book. I'm going to create these pages where people could take notes. And that's what those were. <laughs> that's so funny, which is even more humorous because like you, like when you look at it, it's not a, a long book by any means. No. Like no one, no one should hear like he wrote an extra hundred pages and be like, Oh, I don't have time for that. Not like, <laughs> like not for a light, like a help book or anything like that, but no, it's, I mean, it's a very readable book. It's very easy to get through. It's a very easy, like pick it up, put it back down, come back to it a week later after I've like meditated and brewed and not on, uh, <laughs> you know, a chapter. Right. So yeah. it's a, it's a great, uh, I, I loved, I loved it. It was, and it really helped me at a time in my life where personally I, there was just a lot of confusion for me and mm -hmm. I, and I, um, I will, I'm sure we'll get into this, what you're, you're up to now, but, um, uh, and, and we can, oh, I mean, you run essentially a faith based, um, organization is, I'm not sure if it's nonprofit yeah. or not. You know, we started out uh, a non a nonprofit, and today we're a for profit. Um, we we never took donations to start with, and and so we, you know, we're we're actually transitioning into a public benefit company, and that's something in between, like a for profit and a nonprofit, and it just means that we could use um, our profits and and dump it back into society without any shareholders saying, hey, you know, uh, all this profit needs to go in our in in, in our pocket. So it's kind of this yeah. uh, new type of, of uh, organization that's out there that's become really popular. Yeah, we've seen like Tom's, I think, it isn't like Tom's shoes. Like uh, There's a lot of them heading like that. that way. Yeah. And they want the ability to give back without like a board of directors saying, hey, all that profit needs to go to the shareholders. And then without the oversight of being um, a not-for-profit, and so... Um, and that stigma that kind of comes with that, right? Like, I, I think so. Kind of... You know, we we tried to figure out what are we from a legal standpoint, and, you know, we were an odd not-for-profit that didn't want anybody's money in in terms of donations, you yeah. know? Although, if you want to send me a donation, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, got, yeah. I've gotten you past that, that now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and so I'm sorry, we we totally skipped over the name of of the the what you're building. Uh, it's it, it's um, Kana Global, and yeah. um, you know, I got the name Kana from that story, the biblical story of when Jesus turned like the water to wine, and you know, that's um, uh, we deal with a lot of people that are kind of stuck between life seasons and seeking purpose. A lot of, you know, we work with a lot of startup founders that are trying to figure things out. And and so when I look at like somebody in the marketplace that's, you know, going into this new season in life, it's like a miracle that happens in their life. And so uh, uh, plus I like wine. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it just checks all the boxes for you. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and it's um, it's short and catchy, right? Uh, so I mean, it 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 does it checks all the boxes there. So um, break it down for me. I mean, Cana Global is essentially a um, an incubator, a faith based incubator. Am I right in thinking that? Or yeah, I mean, that's part of what we that? do. We we've really grown. When we first started out, um, what we wanted to do, uh, we were kind of an event driven company in Milwaukee, and so you know there was uh, a friend of mine owned the Hudson um, the Hudson Grill, and at night it's a co working space and a bar, as you know, and you know kind of a restaurant. And at night they weren't doing anything, and we were out searching for buildings, and I and just every building we were uh, you know trying to get our hands on, everything kept on falling through. So we ended up there. We started doing like meetups four or five nights a week just really on topics that we know people in the workplace, you know, career problems, business problems, all that kind of stuff. And so that, so we started out an event company, really building a community around that. And that was our beginnings in, um, uh, in, in Milwaukee. And then we had an opp opportunity later on. I had spoke at a conference in Chicago. Some guy heard me speaking and said, hey, I've got all this land and these buildings in Los Angeles. And so that was our second campus. And that was our campus. And it was uh, 88,000 square feet of indoor outdoor space. So it was a huge place. 
and you know we had studios and we did just real really events we were doing events for four or five nights a week so we've really become like a community in 2020 when we really started streaming a lot of what we were doing we started uh reaching a global audience and so the trouble with the global audience is um they could they, they you know they they didn't live anywhere near us so so um they would miss out on a lot and so um in 2019 i really got the uh, idea of taking everything we're doing and going completely online with it and figuring out like how that would work. And so, and you know, we had no idea COVID was coming. And so by the time COVID came along, we were, it, it actually helped us instead of hurt us. But so today I would tell you that about 80% of our audience is from outside the United States. I don't know how these people hear about us, you know, but in the different events, we have people from really all over the world. There's two things that we're focused on. And one is purpose is people really understanding like their marketplace calling, like the thing that's in their heart that they feel like they were created to do. And then the second thing is uh, launching and growing companies. There's a statistic that has driven this and it's 70% of the global workforce have a desire to find purpose in their life. So that's a that's a large amount of people. And the same percentage of people would like to become self-employed. And so when we set out, we thought, you know what, let's just dedicate a lot of what we do around those two things. Let's provide solutions and let's attract people that are trying to figure out purpose. And if they want to start a business or if they have a existing business with flat or declining revenue, let's help them fix that. So that that's a, that's the bulk of our of, of our focus. And, you know, we're faith based because we're connecting these dots between business, purpose, success and faith. And a lot of times they're disconnected. But for me, as a serial serial entrepreneur, they've they've never been more connected. So we you know, we share that story. That's I mean, I, I love that. It's one of the things that. I loved about um, what you were working on that I was getting to meet a lot of people like me uh, that either were, I mean, I was in the mixture middle of looking on trying to understand my purpose, but also had a, a desire to be successful as a solopreneur. Right. Um, but it oftentimes felt uh, somewhat um, and I don't know if I maybe created this myself, but uh, felt like I was on an island all by myself, right? And then yeah. getting to just have a taste of that community at Kena MKE, I started realizing, wow, look at all these other people that are like me, that are you know trying to make it work, and they're also you know believers, right? Or or working through that. Some of them obviously weren't, um, and yeah. and so there's just a, a lot of really great energy in that environment. Um, and it was really just a great place to be nurtured, um, both in my faith and my understanding of purpose and how to build something sustainable. Right. Right. Um, now I'm, I'm really curious, uh, cause I, I know your background, but, and we haven't touched this on this, but, um, you know, hearing all those things, that's really great. What, I guess, what set you up for this success or all right maybe not that's that's not the right way to say that what set you up uh to know how to do this you've talked about mentioned being an entrepreneur but i know there's a long history there would you be willing to kind of sure. give us the short version because i know that i bet we could talk for for hours on that yeah i mean i so i'm in you know my 37th year as a serial entrepreneur i started my first company a staffing company in newport beach california at 23 years old, so totally young, totally dumb. Um, and and really, you know, the, I only had six months experience before that at a staffing company and they fired me for partying too much. So, you know, I wasn't, and, you know, I came from um, a pretty dysfunctional family. We were like lower middle class. They, you know, um, I'm Hispanic, so we're in this Mexican community. The aspirations we had growing up was maybe if I'm lucky, I would be a factory uh, supervisor someplace. So that was this environment that I, I grew up in. I wasn't part of this, you know, I didn't come from the right family. I didn't go to the right school. There's a, there's a certain percentage of society that are just groomed to be really, really successful. I didn't come from that, but I had these dreams inside me. 
And so um, during actually a down period in my life, when everything went to crap, I read a book that changed my life. It, it was called Tough, Peop uh, Tough Times Never Last, But Tough People Do. And I started planning. I had no money, and I started planning building this company. And guess what? Um, the dream of it and the planning overtook me. And one year later, I'm sitting um, uh, in, in my office is in Newport Beach starting a staffing company. That was the there's genesis. A great, I was going to say, there's a great picture of you, I think, in that office on your website. It's it's worth it for people to go check check it out. It's great. <laughs> you know, I was so stupid that, um, I, you know, I was very insecure. You know, I have no real experience. And so I rented this really fancy office and my desk. Now, this is 37 years ago. I spent $6,000 on a desk. I, I walked into a furniture store and I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to have that desk. Well, I so that was the in, in the picture that you saw. But, you know, uh, Jesse, for one year, I made no money one year. And so to, to pay my bills and to eat, I drove a diesel truck at nighttime. And, you know, I grew up, you know, kind of in a Christian home and, you know, Christian. And my mom, remember Saturday Night Live, the church lady? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's my mom. That's my mom. <laughs> and my dad was kind of like the working alcoholic. You know, that's that's what I, I, I came out of. But that was, um, I learned something in that year. I, I believed in God. I, I wouldn't say I was a follower of God, but I believed in God, you know. And um, when they always say there's no atheist in the foxhole. So after one year of just failing miserably, I was doing what everybody else was doing. And I just, I remember one day just like going, okay, God, you have to know what I'm doing wrong. You have to know. And I don't understand if you know why you wouldn't tell me. And so that was like, it was, a, uh, I would be almost embarrassed to hear it today. My prayer was really irreverent. You know, because I'm just this young guy that's like so frustrated with life and everything, trying to figure out I made this huge mistake. And, you know, what, I wonder what I could sell my $6,000 desk for you know, when, I sh when I shut this place down. And um, all of a sudden, two or three weeks later, all these new ideas started coming into my head. It took me a month to execute them. And the next thing you know, I'm making more money than I've ever made in my life, which wasn't saying much at that point. But you know what happened? We started opening up offices all over Southern California. And that was that was really when I decided, you know what? Um, I like this idea of like having like God, like my business partner. You know, what is he, my silent partner? I don't know. But after that, I let him drive. I let him do the driving. And, um, and you know, I've been doing it ever since that way. It's, um, it, it, it... I love stories about people that pray really bold prayers and, <laughs> and that's what it, it sounds like. You know, I've um, I, I feel like I can relate. Uh, there have been, I think um, I've been in places at on my knees, just at a complete loss of oh, where yeah. my life was going or what I was supposed to be doing to the point where, I can count a couple of times where I was just angry and screaming at God. Like, oh, yeah. Literally, I was out in the middle of nowhere and I was like, what in the world are you <laughs> doing? Like, give me a freaking break. And <laughs> like, and um, I, I, I mean, I've sworn at God and I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, I'm, 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 I'm mad. I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> what is up? You know, and um, it's a not that I not that I encourage doing that, uh, but <laughs> in in the like um, middle of that is this bold prayer that comes out to let him be in charge and to say like, fine, if like I thought you were telling me this, but if that's not what's up, then like it's time for you to show up. <laughs> right, 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 you know, right. So like, anytime now. Like, if your Uber's late, I get it. But let let's go. <laughs> you know, and um, it's amazing because he always does. You know, and... he, he always does. And you know, you know what I found. I, I mean, I've met with um, over the years thousands and thousands of people like you that somehow reached out and we had a coffee or we met or something. What I found is that it doesn't matter if they're a believer or not. When trouble hits, even the atheists pray. When, you know, there's there's no atheists in the foxhole. And and the thing is, is that sometimes um, I think 
God allows us to become uncomfortable so that we seek out the comforter. And, you know, I would tell you that um, every, you know, probably 99% of the people that come to Cana Global are in this stuck season. They're in between life seasons. They're in some kind of transition period. So they're coming to us because everything's not working out well. And, and usually we're like their last resort. They've tried everything on their own. And then um, they've said, you know what? I, I was just on LinkedIn or I was on Facebook or on some one of the social media platforms and I saw this event or I saw something and I usually don't respond to those things, but just something kind of drew me in and that's that's what did it. And I think there are these like God moments where like, you know, he's just waiting for people because what I have found, I mean, you know, now that I've developed a relationship, he wants to help. He's just not, he doesn't force his help on anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think you're you're very um on point with that so that that was the beginning of you know i've really had uh like three seasons in my life um i spent my first 16 years um i grew four companies i launched them grew them exited them and then and then i transitioned to a season where i spent another 16 years turning around problem companies and so i launched a, a turnaround consultancy and we turned around problem companies and, and we were in the, we turned out a lot of for-profit colleges and then tech companies. And, um, and then since 2016, I'm, I'm in this third season um, where we're really helping um, the global workforce and small business entrepreneurs find purpose and launch and grow companies. And so, so that's, you know, that's the uh, 37 years kind of put together. Wow. Wow. That's, I mean, it's, thank you so much for, for your time for giving it because you're so oh, yeah. busy. So thank you so much. Um, so a big part of this podcast uh, is giving our listeners a couple of nuggets that they can take back and um, just put into application in their life. Uh, coming from someone with as much experience and having had as much, many uh, highs and lows, um, I can imagine you have more than two or three to give us, but are you willing to share kind of yeah. like two or three like life hacks? I would love, I know you have a really great one about like kind of like planning your vision and future. So I hope that that's on your, yeah. your list. If it's not, then like maybe we can well, add well, it on. But... No, it is. I'm, I'm actually in it right now because every November and December I do this for myself. But what I would tell uh, people is first, Take some time. End of the year is the perfect time to do this, but you can do this anytime. And decide what you want out of life. So what I do is I take time and I paint a portrait of what I want my life to look like for my personal life first and then my business life. I always start with my personal life. And I, and I ask myself two questions. If I had a magic wand, what would I change in my life over the next five years? Or sometimes I ask it this way. I say, if I knew I couldn't fail and I had all of the resources, what would I attempt to accomplish? And then I start seeing it and I paint up, you know, so for me, you know, I, you know, it, it, it would be like, I can remember one season where I was thinking, you know, I would really love to live like in a cottage. I was past the McMansion and all that. I'd like to be on the coast someplace. I, I see myself cooking for family and have friends over and I like the beach and I like the idea of, you know, walking out in the sand and being inspired to write and something like that. And so I'm not worried about how I'm going to accomplish it at that point. I'm just deciding what I want. And then I'm counting the, the, the cost of time, energy, and focus. So once you see it, write it down. And the second thing is count the cost. Understand the cost of having your dream. And then when you look at your career or your business, understand what it is that you have to do. So it's no different than planning a vacation, understanding the cost. Here's where I want to go. Here's the cost of it. And then start saving money for it. That that would be like the first thing I've been doing this uh, for 30 years, 30 years of, of my marriage. The, the second thing I would say is uh, I'm going to speak to entrepreneurs. Understand the top reasons why companies fail. It, this this part breaks my heart, Jesse, because um, there's so many people, especially now in the gig economy, where people are freelancing and doing all kinds of different things. But 50% of businesses fail in their first year and 90% fail over five years. And it's like a pain, it's like a slow, painful death where they're getting in debt. 
And so they're on this entrepreneurial mountain climb. And when I look at the reasons why they fail, it's so preventable. So the first thing is they don't have product market fit. And so usually they don't have product market fit. And that just means the market doesn't want what they're selling the way they're selling it. They don't have a good way to like vet their business model and brand. And they don't understand customer acquisition, like what it takes to produce revenue. If you would focus, if people would focus on that, if you're starting or growing a company, then, um, and you're producing revenue, then you, then you, uh, once you're producing revenue, you know, you could, you could work the mistakes out of, of your business. And the third thing is just mentor up. I mean, the reason why I'm generous with my time is because other people have been generous with their time. That's it. So it's like, I've always found people that kind of look like I want to become, or they've made the journey, they've climbed the mountain that I want to climb. And, and so you'll, you'll be surprised at how many people are glad to share their stories. And I want to find out like what mistakes, what, you know, where did you get scraped up? Where did you fall? So I don't want to have to make that same mistake. So th those would be the, the, the three things, know where you want to go, really have a way to vet what you're doing. And, and you do that through mentorship. Find somebody. I mean, I have people reach out to me um, at really every single day from LinkedIn that are like, hey, can we do a Zoom call, do a coffee? And as long as I know they're not going to like try to sell me something, I always say yes. I always say yes. And it's, you know, and if I could, I would spend all my time doing that because I really love it. I Maybe that's part of the reason I keep reaching out to you, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if you didn't realize it yet, you know, uh, you're definitely one of those people that I aspire to to be like, maybe not all of the experiences, but definitely uh, a lot of the experiences. And I, I similarly really just enjoy being able to have these conversations with people and uh, hopefully one day um, can be at that point where I can offer just a, a, as much uh, really valuable insight as you do. So thank you. Thank you so much My for, pleasure. for those nuggets. Um, I've heard you, you say some of those before, but um, that, that um, nugget about why companies fail, I think that's really interesting. And um, people don't like to share that. And that's a big part of this, this phases of our city's podcast is, Hey, help, help us help, help the others, whether you're in the same industry or not. Tell us what the pitfall was that you didn't realize was going to be a pitfall, right? right. Or, yeah, where did you scrape your knee that you're like, oh, like I should let people know about that, that, that bump in the road, you know? <laughs> um, because if the more the more of us that don't have to go over that bump, the further we'll be able to um, move forward. So, Gerald, thank you, thank you for your time. Um, I'm really looking forward to to reconnecting with you again soon. Yes. Um, and I think maybe just you and I sooner than than later, but maybe on this podcast, maybe again in in six months, um, would be really great to hear how things keep on moving as as our world keeps on changing. Um, for for our listeners, LinkedIn seems to be probably the best way to to follow yeah, you. LinkedIn, right? reach, out reach out to me out. on LinkedIn, and I promise I'll I'll uh, uh, get back to you, especially if you're a video producer. Yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Just don't try to sell them anything, at least not right away. <laughs> and uh, KanaGlobal.org. Org. Think, yes. Right. Yeah. Kana Kana Global. Global. Org. Yeah. Check it out. Just some. There's just so many things that you guys have going on. Um, and they're all just really jiving together really well. I, I really enjoyed going on your site and, and just seeing how uh, you guys are moving and grooving. So cool. Thank you so much. Have a really great all right. day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.